Hello friends, this is Sala and you're watching Smart Code. In the last two consecutive tutorials, we developed two sliders, an automated image slider and a slider with previous and next buttons, right? Now, another very interesting project to learn more about the JavaScript is to develop an image gallery. Image gallery is a very common application and you find it everywhere on the web. Image gallery is also a slider and we call it thumbnail slider because we have a thumb bar to choose and display the images, right? So we are going to program this image gallery with the help of JavaScript. Although there are some libraries, external libraries that you can also use to implement image gallery to your website. We won't use any external library. We will use pure JavaScript to get it done because the purpose of this tutorial is to learn and understand JavaScript. So let's jump into the code without any further delay and start the development. So in my code editor, I have three files, one for HTML, one for CSS, and one for JavaScript. And I have a folder named image and inside that folder, I have all the images. I named my images from one to five and the size of the images is already set to 600 into 400 pixels. You can have your own size based on your website layout. So whatever size you like, you just need to resize the images before you put them on the web. I would recommend don't use CSS for resizing. It will put extra burden to the browser and your application won't load faster, right? So let's prepare the HTML for this application and start with the application title. And after the program title, I will take a div. Let's call it full image. And inside the div, we only need an image element for displaying the image in full size. Right, so the first image, as you can see here, is already set and it will be our startup image. Now we need some more HTML to create a thumb bar. And in the thumb bar, we will put all the images at once. So let's code it, take a div and call it thumb bar. And now we need five image elements, one for each image. Right, so this is the HTML we need. The first image element is for displaying the image in full size. And these five image elements are for creating the thumb bar. And notice one more thing here. I have assigned the same class to all the thumb bar image elements. And the reason is I will get all the image elements at the same time using the query select all method and will listen for the click event to them. So don't be confused at this stage. Everything will be clear when we write the JavaScript. In applications where we have multiple elements and wanna recognize a click on a single element, then we usually code HTML like this, right? And here you see the result in the browser. Let's now put some CSS and give the application a slider look. So link the CSS file first. So our style of CSS file is linked. And in our CSS file, our first selector as usual will be the universal selector. We will reset padding and margin and set box sizing to the border box. And now I will target the body element and give it a width and align it to the center of the page. You may have noticed one thing here. The width of the body is exactly the same to the width of the images, right? Let's now check the result in the browser. Right, so the body is center aligned and so the images. Let's now style the title of the application. Target the H1 and put some styles. Right, so the title is also center aligned. And here we go. So our application title and the displayed image is at the right place. And we now just need to create a thumb bar using the rest of the images, right? So let me show you how we do that with the help of CSS. We will first target all the thumb bar image elements. And here we will first assign a width to all the images and it will be 20%, right? So the size of each image is 20% out of 100. And right after that, 
we will write float left. Now we have floated all the images to the left and as a result, you will see them in a row. So let's refresh the page and check the result. And here you see, we now have a beautiful image thumbbar. We can put some more properties here, for example, the border around the images to keep them a little bit separated from each other. And we can also set a pointer cursor to the images because this image is gonna have a click function later on. So in the CSS, we would say border one pixel solid black and cursor pointer right and so now we are done with the css and this is our final layout let's now go to the javascript file and code some interesting javascript and get this application done and so here we have our javascript file which is empty at this moment and before we write something here we need to include this file to the html so let's do that right so the file is included in the javascript we will code step by step and we only need four to five lines of code let me give you a rough idea what we are going to do in the javascript we will first get all the thumb bar images in the javascript and the method that gonna help us to get the images is the query selector method right and as we have all the images we will loop through them so when we loop through the image elements we would have access to the individual element and as we have access to the individual image element we will listen for the click event using the add event listener method and if we succeed in listening the click event to an individual image element we can then perform operation like we can display that image in full size okay so that was a rough idea and it may sounds confusing and difficult but i promise it's not so difficult let's not do it practically in the javascript so as i said we will first get all the thumb bar image elements in the javascript using the query select all method now we have all the image elements that has a class named all images and you know in our html so we have only these image elements with the class all images so all these image elements are now in the javascript so this query selector all method is gonna return an array or a node list of all the elements. And if you want, so you can confirm it by logging the result into the cancel. Let us save the result in a variable. And now log the result in the cancel. Refresh the page. Now open the dev tool. And so here in the console and here you see an array or a node list is returned by the method we have all the five image elements and they are brought in the program in the same order they are coded in the html right so the result of a query select all method is an array or a node list and that means we can run a loop to access to every member of the array right okay so we can continue with this variable because we have created it and we also know that this variable is actually an array. So what we are gonna do, we will call for each loop on that. Right, so we are using a for each loop in order to loop through all the elements inside the array. And the item that you see here is the loop variable. In this loop variable, we're gonna store the array elements one by one. For example, in the first round, this item variable is gonna store the first image element that we have in the array. And on the second round, the second element is stored. And the same way, the loop will go through all the elements in the array. So the item variable is actually represents the image elements so in every round as we have access to the individual image element we will call add event listener method to it and will listen for the click event and when the click is performed we need to execute some javascript so we need a function Let's try to figure out again what we have done so far. We got all the image elements belong to this class. Then we looped through them one by one and attached the click event to them, right? 
and when the click is performed this arrow function is called now before we go further let's first check out if this piece of code is working or not so when the click is performed i will log something to the console for example okay right so let's now check the console result in the browser refresh the page and now make a click on the first one here you see okay that means the first image is responding on click let's now click on the second image it's working third fourth and fifth so all the image elements are now responding on click right now you must have noticed a small letter e here this is actually called event object and by convention we use letter e to code it but you can have whatever name you like for example you can call it event or you can call it event object right so you can give event object whatever name you like but the question is what does it do because this is the most important thing here and it will solve our problem okay let's try to understand it we are using click event and this one is called event object event object simply holds a lot of information about the event and in our case the event is click so the event object knows exactly where the click is performed on the html and this is what we want using this event object we can find out on which image a click is performed let me show you how this event object has several properties and one property is called target event object dot target so this target property returns the element on which the click is performed let's first check it out in the browser we need to refresh the page and now click on the first image so what you see in the console the first image element is returned by the target property right and if i click on the second image you see the second image element is returned and the same will happen with the third fourth and the fifth image right so step by step we are going closer to the solution we are now able to perform click on the images and at the same time we are getting them in the javascript now as we have image elements in the javascript we can easily extract their attributes for example the src attribute alt or class but in this application we are interested in src attribute right so in the javascript target is going to return the entire element and when the entire element is returned we would say we are only interested in src attribute so what will happen now you will make a click on the image element but the return value will only be the src attribute of that image element let's now confirm it in the browser refresh the page and click on the first image now here you see only the src attributes value is returned right and src attributes value is actually a image so now our problem is almost solved we will click on the thumb bar image and we will get the same image in the javascript and as we get that image we will put it on display right here and in the javascript we will now get our display image element which has a class displayed image so let's get this element using that query selector method so now we have our display image and we are only interested in the src attribute and to the src attribute of the display image we will assign the image which is being clicked by the user at runtime our image gallery application is now ready and like i said earlier it requires four or five lines of code and you see here one two three and four we wrote only four lines of code and the application is ready let's now check the application one last time refresh the page and now make a click okay something is wrong here let me see what is wrong with the application cancel and uh, i think we have typo somewhere in the code and this one worked earlier uh, yes here we need to put a dot here right because query selector matches the selectors css selectors and displayed image is a class selector right and our class selector starts with a period so let's now save the application 
and refresh the page you see the error is gone and let's now check it out right you see it's working perfectly fine so that was a simple tutorial on image gallery and i hope you like this one and don't forget to like the video subscribe the channel and leave the comments i will see you in some other tutorials and thanks for watching